Have I ever watched this? Oh, I don't think I have. Ah, finalmente, hemos llegado I al episodio de México. Pero no puedo hacer esto sin un mexicano de verdad. Denle la bienvenida a mi amigo César de Puerto Vallarta. Hola, buenas tardes a todos. He probably says that, oh, there's subtitles, that this is his Mexican friend and he's going to explain si, Mexico. Si tuvieras que decir una cosa de México para abrir este episodio, ¿cuál sería? Pues, México es un país místico, colorido, lleno de cultura y tradiciones. México va mucho más allá que el mariachi y el tequila solamente. Eh, pronto les contaremos. With all the respect, I, I don't want to sound bad, but the first thing that comes into my mind when I'm in Mexico is cartel. Everybody, name one word that's in your mind. The second you hear about Mexico. I want to see what you guys think. What is the first thing in your mind when you hear Mexico? For me, it's it's La Cartel, bro. Tacos. A lot of tacos. Escobar, Breaking Bad, drugs, football. Taco, 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 taco. Food, food. Lots of food, yeah. Looks like food is the number one thing. Nachos, yeah. Food seems to be number one. Mojito, yeah. Looks like the food is rank one, huh? Tequila! Bueno. Oh, yeah, and he speaks English, too. Oh, yeah, I went to college in Texas, so a little bit. It's time to learn geography now! Hey, everyone, I'm your host, Barbs. And I'm Cesar. As you know, I'm American. Caesar's Mexico. Like, Mexico, what do I know about Mexico? Mexico is south of USA. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The capital is Mexico City. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It is uh, one of the fattest countries in the world, I think. There are studies showing that they're one of the most obese countries in the world. A um, lot of poverty, which leads to a lot of criminality, but also very beautiful culture, very beautiful nature, amazing food culture, very, very hot though, spicy. The Aztecs. Hmm. Mexican, we're neighbors. I'm excited. You excited? Yes, I'm very excited for this episode. You know, I've been following uh, geography now the since like the BC countries. Country country, so this is something I've been waiting for. for a long time in Mexico. Oh, by the way, we stopped doing sponsored brands on country episodes, but this time we'll break that rule because Caesar can hook you up in Puerto Vallarta. Caesar, tell them what they need to know. Yes, well, visit discoverpvr.com. Check it out. Tours, transportation, transfers, everything you need. To and Geography Now endorses them. All right, comenzamos. Sí, si, bienvenidos a México. Bienvenidos a Mexico. Bienvenido. Named after the Mexica people from ancient Aztec times, Mexica. Mexico is a powerhouse on the world stage. And it's hard to imagine how the entire Latin world, let alone the Western Hemisphere, would operate without it. First of all, Mexico is located on the southern part of the North American continent, straddling the Pacific Ocean, Gulf of California, and the Gulf of Mexico. Pretty fucking big country if you think about it, right? Huge fucking country. Oh, bordered by the U.S. to the north. And it's interesting, right, that from the media, movies and shit, you always see Mexico as like the desert, orange. You know, in every movie ever, they put like an orange filter over it. But there's so much jungle, too. Look at the south, how much jungle and green there and is. Guatemala and Belize to the southeast. The country is divided into 32 federal entities, 31 states, one of which Chihuahua. is called Mexico, and the capital city of Mexico City. Oh, and Mexico City is technically sinking about 10 to 20 centimeters a year. Yeah, Mexico City is the most fucked city I'm, I'm researching a lot of water stuff because i invest in water uh, stocks a lot mexico city is the most fucked city in the world when it comes to water because of something i forgot what it is but they're yeah, like they falling into a lake. hole and shit anyway with a greater metropolitan population over 21 million mexico city is the largest city and oldest capital city in the entire western hemisphere and in itself has about the same gdp and economy as the entire country of peru after mexico city okay. though the next largest cities are guadalajara in jalisco guadalajara. and monterey in nuevo león and if you come here, you will most likely fly to one of the busiest airports. The capitals, Mexico City International. Then the second Damn. place is actually Cancun. Then Guadalajara and Monterey. And I would guess uh, Cancun is kind of like a vacation place for Americans in a way, where all the tourists come. Like Mallorca is for Germans. Like everybody goes there and just has fun. Yeah, we Americans love Cancun yeah, uh, and we love going there all the time. And we and do Tijuana too. And Tijuana also, right? I, I, know, I hate it only from movies. No Tijuana promises. Cancun, Today, Mexico has no they territorial disputes. They did once with France over Clipperton Island. Island, but that got settled. Otherwise, the border with the US, yeah, we know, we know what you're thinking, but hear me out, it actually does have some quirky anomalies. Yeah. For example, on the border with Tijuana, there is a friendship park where you can chat and shake hands with locals of both sides through a fence that goes all the way into the Pacific. Further east in California, two towns split by the border kind of trolled each other. One named itself Mexicali and the other side Calexico. And <laughs> in Naco, Arizona, the local residents have a cross-border volleyball game every so often. <laughs> no, we don't want to sugarcoat everything. Yes, there are certain 
sections that are more barricaded and strict on the crossing. I mean, it's such a long border. How will you ever keep that fully safe? That's impossible. It's way too big, But man. besides the complicated nature behind these issues, there's a lot more to it than most media outlets portray. Speaking of... I always say, I'm gonna say, oh, you're gonna shit on me now for saying this, but I feel like the best way to make the Mexican border safe for America would be to invest more in Mexico, aka making poverty and criminality go down in Mexico so they, they don't want to come over anymore. I think that would be the best way. Of territorial anomalies. In the southernmost state of Mexico, Chiapas has some interesting towns that operate under a system called usos y costumbres, which means something like autonomous customary law. The people, mostly of indigenous descent, govern their own internal affairs, and the government just kind of lets them do their own thing without interference. It sounds kind of scary, but today it's actually- It's funny, because I was just watching C Sicario, like two days ago. It was about a city called Ju Juarez. And the movie is kind of like Juarez is really bad and shooting all the time and beheaded people in the streets and shit. Kind of a dark shit. fascination that has drawn Juarez. in a ton of tourists. And finally, yeah. let's just get it over with. Just like how we discussed in the Italy episode, everybody Juarez knows about it. Worst. It's nothing new. To a varying degree of power and disputable boundaries, yes, uh, certain you, areas of Mexico funny, do still kind of fall under cartel influence. It's a very... Oh. Show me again. Yes, certain areas of Mexico do still kind of fall under cartel... Still? The Sinaloa cartel, Tijuana Juarez cartel. Yeah, Juarez in the north. Jalisco new generation. No major cartel presence. Cartel influence. Jesus. It's a very strange system run by underground individuals that kind of meshes itself into normalcy with everyday citizens. There are syndicates like the Cartel of Sinaloa in the northwest, the Zetas in the northeast, the Familia Michoacana in the center of the country, and the Jalisco Nueva Generacion in the west. Caesar, I'll let you explain this. Today, it's very hard to estimate how many people are still involved and how much money is coming out since numbers are always changing, especially after the war was declared on the cartels by the government in 2006 by President Calderon. But for what it's worth, the situation is still being dealt with today. Most Mexicans can agree that this operation largely failed. A large portion of the violence in Mexico is still caused by disputes between cartels for territory. Thank you, Caesar. Well, I'm glad we got that out of the way because now we can lighten up a bit and talk about the almost infinite number of beautiful notable spots Mexico has to offer. Some cool man-made landmarks might include places like the Basilica de Guadalupe in Mexico City, UNAM, the oldest university in North America, the castle of Chapultepec. Wow. Wow, that looks instead looks like a picture, man. Wow. Damn. The catacombs at Templo Expiatorio. Biblioteca Vasconcelos. Biblioteca Vasconcelos. The tunnels of Puebla. The Plaza de Toros, Mexico. Ah, this is. Uh, oh, I hate that shit. It's also in Spanish culture, right? With the where they fuck with the the bolts and shit. The bronze sculptures of Puerto Vallarta. And if you're in, did you see that bronze sculpture? The tips of, of Puebla. Sculptures the are always a different color because every Plaza de Toros, the boobs, Mexico. Man. The bronze. Look at that. The, the, you know why these boobs are different color? Because people are touching the shit like crazy, man. Sculptures 100%. of Puerto Vallarta. And 100%. if you're in for some creepy stuff... The My dad used to have a friend back in the day who was a carpenter. He would make a wooden sculptures. And he would... Camera? Oh, you couldn't see? Well, it's better like that, okay? You don't need to see boobs, you're too young. My dad used to have a carpenter friend many years ago. And the carpenter, he would always make statues out of wood. And he would literally tell me, I, I met him like last year. I would meet him again. He's like really alcoholic now. He always would put more luck, uh, how to say, um, you have the wood and then they put something on it to make it uh, last forever. Um, Varnish? Varnish. Yeah, and he extra, he puts always, uh, by contract, because he makes contracts for like public parks, by contract, he has to put extra varnish on the boobs, because everybody touched that shit and it uh, erodes very quickly. True story, boys. Okay, let's watch the video. Casa de los Lamentos in Guanajuato. Torture Museum of Hacienda del Cochero. The Mummy mm. Museum in Guanajuato. That creepy what doll island of what Las Muñecas. And every so often, you might come across a Malverde altar. He's the patron saint of drug cartels. They have a patron saint for drug... <laughs> he looks like one of the characters in... Actually, there's a Pixar movie called Coco. Very good movie. Coco is really good. And the Whoa, dad of the guy looks like this. Maybe that was a meme. Nice. Yes, so thank you, Power of Bauer. Cartels. <laughs> but best for last, there are hundreds... Didn't in Breaking Bad, the two bald guys, they crawled up to this guy and prayed to Hundreds him of Mesoamerican pyramids and sites. Some are possibly yet to be discovered, hidden in the jungles, but the most famous ones probably being... Cholula, which is the largest monument ever constructed according to the Guinness World Record. That's so cool, Monte man. Alban. 
Dude, uh, shit like that blows my mind. That shit is so fucking old. And it must be such a privilege to walk among these. But the Wakan, the Pyramid of the it's Sun, and the Moon. crazy how long and the new existed. Is it weird though how in South America, Egypt, and Indonesia, pyramids have been made? Like, kind of, the, not the same design per se, but pyramids are a theme that has been long around, all around the world, man. It's really interesting. And... How did the cultures, I mean, we're all coming from the same origins, right? And not aliens. But how did they uh, share? Seven wonders of the world, Where the Mayan pyramid from? of Chichen Itza. Really Keep in mind, we said man-made. I know a lot of you might be wondering, strong, why didn't they talk about all the cool natural um, sites like the Sinoche, you know, right? the volcanoes and canyons? The, the, well, that's because that stuff will be long in yeah. the next section. Look. Easiest thing to build, yeah. Mexico's land is kind of like a piñata. Colorful and full of surprises. Dude, a piñata? You really rushed this part of the script, didn't you? Yes, I did. First of all, the country is located on the west end. Do I even have Mexican viewers? Is that... Uh, I can't trust you guys. Let me check my stats. I didn't check my stats in forever, man. I never checked my stats. Uh, last month... Uh... My viewers come mostly from Grisha, Arumba, and XQC. Uh, where do I see where you guys are from again? Here? Here. Germany now totally took over. It's because I don't stream late anymore. USA still... Wow. No Mexicans, man. A lot of Turks! The, the Turks love me, bro. Hello! What? That was kind of racist. Sorry. But they love me, bro. France? Yeah, no fucking Mexico. How, how are people from GS watching me, man? It's, I'm never online in your time. Edge where the North American plate meets the Pacific plate, making them part of the larger ring of fire. The country is made up of three main mountain chains. The Sierra Madre Occidental, which has the largest lake, the Lake of Chapala in Jalisco. Chapala. The Sierra Madre Oriental, which has the Mexico, highest man. mountain peak, or Pico de Orizaba. Pico and de Orizaba. Sierra Madre del Sur, which effectively surrounds the large Mexican plateau in the middle. A narrow flat valley lies between the Chiapas Mountains, which then swings up to the flat, humid Yucatan to the south. I would really love to to travel to this part of the world and it, it's gonna sound like a lie but I truly I'm scared because I'm a ginger because the sun is gonna kill me so hard man it's it's like it really I, I was once in Thailand during summer dude I couldn't even leave the shadow I would just fucking burn instantly bro it's Southeast. so scary oh yeah and don't forget the Arab Baja Peninsula to the west at the bottom of the plateau lies the trans Mexican yeah. volcanic belt where most Vampire? of the seismic and volcanic activity you, lies uh, the country has cast. about 24 volcanoes six, the most violent one is considered to be the Popocatépetl which is less than 70 kilometers away from Ciudad de México there's also the world's smallest volcano Cuexcomate in Puebla at only 13 meters tall. Oh, no, what a cute little force of destruction. <laughs> oh, that's nothing. A volcano once randomly erupted out of a dude's farm in 1943 in Michoacan. It grew over a thousand feet oh. tall. Whoa! The Jeez. Rio Grande River, which makes part of the border shared with Should Texas, is the country's farmer. longest river. However, the longest non-shared river completely in Mexico would be the Nasas Aguanabal. Along the coast are flatter green plains. Basically, the north part is rockier and drier with landmarks like the... Why do gingers have such weak skins? Neanderthal gene Swedish I uh, actually really interesting dude after this let's look at a video how gingers are made I would guess it was a mutation in old times in the north and the mutation settled itself because gingers were successful in the cold and north like Germanic Scandinavian shit I guess like why would the I know it's a lack of manolin I know but uh, why would ah uh, you just get a lot of milts right yeah why would this uh, mutation, gingerism, stay with the human race so long? Like, uh, wouldn't uh, females, like, let's talk serious here. Women oftentimes decide to not pair themselves with gingers because they will think they're genetically inferior because they can't handle the sun and stuff. But still, gingers were fucking for a long time. It must have been the alphaness of gingers. Gingers must have been so alpha on the north that they just fucking Vikings and shit, right? I want to watch a video about Barrancas that. Del Cobre Canyon and the Sonoma Desert with the massive what crater pocketed Tecolote lava fields. Whereas the south part is humid and lush with biosphere reserves and rainforests harboring thousands of animal species. <laughs> Speaking of which... Or maybe it's just uh, over-satisfaction, aka you live in Ireland and there's only gingers, so you have to fuck Mexico ginger. ranks as the fourth most biodiverse country in the planet. 10 to 12 percent of the world's biodiversity. Oh, and bugs! There's a monarch butterfly sanctuary at Pazcuaro. And the firefly forest in Tlaxcala, as well as the national animal, the golden eagle, and the most iconic dog breed, the Newtons with lack of melanin survived cold conditions more than normies with melanin. Ah, 
Uh, yeah, because whiteness, aka even gingerism, lets more uh, sun rays inside the skin in the north. Right? That's how white people are made. That's why the white people mutation survives, because in north and south, their skin absorbed more sun. Right? I don't want to. This is very unscientific right now. Chihuahua, Something the smallest like that, dog right? in the world, and the nearly hairless Cholo Squinkle or Cholo dog. Remember when we Cholo. saw those dogs when I visited you, uh, Caesar, and then like, uh, yeah, that was like my Come second in. favorite part of the whole trip. Um, and what was your first favorite part? The part where you introduced Esclava to me, and then remember I got a little tipsy, and then we played poker, and then uh, I won, and then I almost fell down. And it's funny though because Mexico also has a ton of like secret hidden natural land formations. There's that strange 153 kilometer long underground river That's in the so Yucatan. Cool, the Sotano wow. de las Golondrinas. Wow. I love that shit. Isn't this in uh, one of the David Edinburgh uh, in San Luis Potosí, which is the largest cave shaft in the world? That's so the cool, giant bro. crystals in the caves of Naika. There's Jesus. even the Islas Marietas. Yeah, Lisa talked about this. There's if you go there in real life, it's full of tourists. It's which has so a hidden full of beach tourists. inside a hole in the island. You almost brought me there, but we couldn't go in. Yeah, unfortunately, the weather conditions didn't permit it. But still, visit discoverpvr.com. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll come back and visit someday. Wait, can I come? Yeah, sure. Catch. What are these, goggles? Yeah, you can swim there, from Long Beach. Resource-wise, Mexico is the world's largest producer of avocados, silver. They introduced tons silver. of new foods that would make their way. They have a crazy food culture. Just check if everything is good. I don't want to play wrong. Across the globe, namely the big four, corn, chiles, chocolate, and tomatoes. We would not have pizza if it wasn't for Mexico. Let that sink in. Oh, and ah, bullshit! What did he say? Dude, Italians in chat right now, they're ready to go to war, bro. What did he say? And tomatoes. We would not have pizza if it wasn't. What? He talks about the tomato. Pizza was a poor people's food in Italy, which, yeah, I, I, I saw a documentary about that shit. Napoli or some shit, they, uh, somewhere in Italy. They didn't have much, so they, the women made dough and they put all the shit they had on it, and that was the first pizza. Maybe the tomato thing, man. But hey, 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 careful here, Before man. For Mexico, let that sink in. Oh, and dear Mexico, thank you for inventing tahin and chamoy. My life was empty before this discovery. Food-wise, there's too much to cover, but generally speaking, there are seven regions of cuisine. In the Yucatan Peninsula, they love the anato seeds. They have my wow, never seen it before. Dishes like pokchu. In the south, the tlayudas are very popular, and the chapulines. <laughs> Remember, Ken, we tried those and they were good, right? Yeah, uh, I'm sorry, stream, I feel like so Anyway. In the Baja California, there are plenty of fish dishes and other seafood. The Bajio is very popular for their guacamayas. In the north, they love Cabrito is very popular in Monterrey. And they also... Again, me and Lisa watch a lot of food documentaries, man, shit. And South and Middle America are super, super meat-based. I don't know where that comes from culturally, but they're super... Everything meat, 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 meat. We have a big Tex Mex influence. In the West, we eat pozole, birria, and we also invented tequila. In the center of Mexico, there's a lot of tortas, mole, and chile mole. poblano. Economy wise, Mexico is the 15th largest in the world That's in nominal not so terms, bad, and 11th by purchasing power. And they are busy. Pretty the good. World Trade Organization and OECD has ranked Mexico as the hardest working country in the world. On average, they work over 43 hours a Jeez. week. That's it? <laughs> Dude, that actually seems pretty low, to be honest. Main exports yeah, of the country. 43 a week is not that. Well, on average, average, yeah, but 43 isn't that crazy. Things like automobiles, electronics. They are one? the largest flat screen television exporter in the world as of 2017. <gasps> we covered a lot. Okay, I think that's most of it. Landscape, animals, resources, food, economy. A lot of livestock over there. Should we talk but not about a lot of farmland. Now? That's why lots yeah, of meat. Why not? Huh? Next section, go. You know, it's kind of complicated because there's three different kinds of titles for Mexican. First of all, you have the Mexicano, which means it's a person from Mexico. The Mexican. Mashallah. is a person from the state of Mexico. And the Mexicano, or as we call them, Chilangos, is a... I always feel like South Middle America has no ugly women. Like, when they're 50, they go into a room and they come out and they're these small little... Slightly overweight little grandmas, but person from Jesus the capital, Christ. Mexico City. So yeah, take note on that. First of all, it's the country is made up of about 124 million people wow. and is the largest <laughs> Spanish-speaking country you. and largest economy in the Latin world. It's a little difficult to get. I watched you almost every day. Italy Empire, blah, 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 blah. Exact numbers because there are a lot of opinions on race in Mexico, and the official census does not technically collect data on ethnicity. But overall, it is said that somewhere around two thirds of the country identifies as Mexican. 
mestizo. About 21% identify as predominantly Amerindian, whereas 7% identify natives. as straight up Amerindian. The remainder uh. is made up of other groups, mostly white European Mexicans, while a small group of Asians like Lebanese, Chinese, Japanese, and Koreans exist alongside Afro Mexicans, which make up about 1.2% of the population. We use the Mexican peso as our currency, and we use type A and B American style plug outlets, and we drive on the right side of the road. All the as countries speak Spanish. However, technically, it isn't an official language. The country recognizes 68 other indigenous languages. These tribes each have their unique story and history that goes back thousands of years before colonialism, as depicted by petroglyphs, codexes, and Mesoamerican carvings. They had unique traits and traditions. The Aztecs were known for having a thriving economy, yet had brutal human sacrifice rituals. The Mayans were- There was like a day in the history of, I don't know, Mayans or Aztecs, where they sacrificed like, you guys know, tell me. There's this legendary day in history that's actually confirmed where they are sacrificed like 10,000 people in one day or some shit. That actually happened. Someone, someone chat knows. Really good at math and had a unique system of seeing time in an endless cycle pattern Bullshit. rather than linear. And today tribes still go on carrying ancient traditions. Everything from the Raramuri or Tarahumara, or known as the running tribe, who can go over 200 miles in two days with sandals. Jesus. The Voladores de Papantla, upside down hanging, spinning Only musicians of various central tribes well, like the Otomi. There's else even now. indigenous festivals held like every Mexican, year in Oaxaca to called Yelaguetza. At around 82%, the majority of the country identifies as belonging to the Catholic faith and Catholicism place There's a place in Mexico where you feel like the floor is sand, but it's actually ashes from bones. A huge and slightly interesting fusion role in Mexican society. Catholicism in Mexico is unique because it has kind of its own story. Every Mexican knows about the Nuestra Señora de Guadalupe Church. It all started by a vision of the Virgin Mary from this guy. Today, native tradition and Catholicism kind of go hand in hand in Mexico. The biggest example probably being the Day of the Dead or the Dia de los Muertos. No other Catholic community does this besides Mexicans. Many scholars claim to trace the ofrenda and dead ancestor honoring tradition to the Aztec this, festival uh, dedicated to the cool, goddess man. of I the underworld, really cool. Mictec Aquihuatl, and stuff like that. You see a lot of holy water and crosses, but there's always like a touch of that, like, you know, pre colonial Mexican magic added in there, right, Caesar? It is. It's exactly. Hmm. Privatization, private armies. Right. Sport wise, soccer or football is of course. They have Ted Mosby as a goalkeeper. Of course, right? widely popular. However, not in every region. And many sports are uniquely iconic to Mexico, such as the charreria, which is a kind of like a rodeo. And of course, we have the lucha libre. Lucha in fact, libre. Mexico has 150 pre Hispanic games, some still played today, each with the risk of dying from, such <laughs> as a pelota pure pecha, which is like a fire hockey he played at night or Pok -ta -pok, the four kilogram heavy rubber ball thing that you have to hit with your hips and uh, you know put it through a stone hoop. Can you imagine hitting anything on your body with a four kilogram solid rubber ball? It's like, Jesus. whoa, I can't believe you guys do that. Mexican history extends millennia prior to any colony and it would take forever to cover it all, but in the quickest way we can condense it, Olmecas. Teotihuacan, Toltecas, and Mexicas. The Mayans in the Yucatan Peninsula. The Spanish arrive, you can kind of guess where that went. Colonization, having the Spanish in Mexico for 300 years. The people all start mixing. Mestizos are born. Independence in 1810, led by this guy. Empire, led by this Austrian prince guy. He gets killed. French tried to invade. Yeah, that didn't work the out. The French invaded Mexico? I, I never knew about president. that. Good president. Porfirio Diaz, good president at the beginning, but eventually became a dictator. Civil war, although Mexicans usually call it the Mexican Revolution. Lázaro Cárdenas, the PRI. That guy's not before the guy before. Lost for the first time in over 70 years. That then Mexico's first left-wing president was elected in. And despite geopolitical turmoil, the economy actually still stays relatively steady and doesn't spike. That looks like Berlin. We have like the same thing like, in Berlin Or dips, so that's good. What is my thing? I don't know. I am. And here we are today. Some now. notable people of Mexico or of Mexican descent may include historical figures like Moctezuma and Cuauhtémoc. Everybody name a famous Mexican. Uh, Danny, Danny, Danny Tre, Tre, Treo? Danny, Danny Treo. That's the first guy that comes to my name. Uh, Rey Mysterio, El Chapo, Montezuma, Frida Kahlo, Santa Ana, Pablo Escobar was a fucking Colombian. Nacho Libra, Yuan. Antonio Banderas, Walter White, Gab Gabriel Iglesias, yeah, that's a cool guy, man. 
en Sor Juana Inés de la Cruz, José María Morelos, Josefa Oriz de Domínguez, Emiliano Zapata, Pancho Villa, that's, that's Athlete Slide, Oscar de la Joya, Raf Fuck Oscar de la Joya, cokehead motherfucker, uh, Rafael Marquez Alves, Hugo Sanchez. I remember Sanchez. Tom Marquez and Hugo Sanchez, Sanchez soccer yeah, players. Yeah. Singers like Antonio Aguilar, Jorge Negrete, Pedro Infante, Vincente Fernandez, Luis Miguel, Juan Gabriel. Oh, and if you ask any like American Mexican, they all love Selena. Actors like Dolores Del Rio, Maria Felix, Roberto Gomez Bolaños. And even though she's not Mexican, Lupita Nyongo was born in Mexico. And they you guys love her, right? We do. Yeah. <laughs> Diego Luna, Eugenio Derbez, Salma Hayek, Gael Garcia Bernal. Of course, everybody knows Frida Kahlo and Diego Rivera. I've seen Frida Kahlo many times in my life. I have no idea what she's known for, though. Alejandro Did González Iñárritu, cool? Alfonso Cuarón, and Guillermo del Toro. Nobel Prize winners del Alfonso Toro, García yeah. Robles, Octavio Paz, and Mario Molina. Some other notable people may include Les Carlos Canseco, and Carlos Simhelu, whose entire net worth was about 7% of Mexico's GDP at one point. Yeah, he had a lot of business in other countries in Latin America and the world. And speaking of relations with other countries... Thank you, Akno. So Mexico is quite the social butterfly. The monarch social butterfly from Michoacan. First of all, in Asia, man, we the Philippines are another former Spanish colony. Again. And they're kind of like the interesting random Asian cousin that shows up that you didn't realize you what? had. They generally get along, just not in boxing. Japan was the first Asian country to painter, come in contact uh. with Latin America. And today, they can travel visa-free. Japan oh. has opened up factories oh, wow. in Mexico. Wow, that's pretty crazy. If I'm a Mexican cartel gangster, I can go to Japan visa free? Mexico and was the first Damn. country to respond after the recent earthquake. And Mexico was the first to oh. send aid after the recent tsunami. Oh. In Latin That's America, cool. most Mexicans might say the countries of the Pacific Alliance, Colombia, Chile, and Peru. These countries have not only had a the tight. What is this country here? What the fuck is that Vietnam on Wish, man? Look at this country here. Might as well just. Not history under yeah. Spanish rule and do great business with each other. But they also piggyback off of each other's cultures and they love watching Mexican Sheila TV Spanish shows familiar? and movies. Mexicans love visiting these places. It's almost like they're just visiting extended family. In regards to Spain, all the colonial animosity has died down, fortunately. We're cool now with Spanish people and they love visiting Mexico. Like we mentioned in the Canada episode, Mexicans have been be cool flocking to Canada language. in recent years really after cool. the visa requirements were lifted. And the Canadian government actually encourages immigration to help assist the workforce. Now we reach the US. I know, I know, you've heard the headlines. It seems kind of complicated, but if we look at the overall scope of diplomacy, despite any political hindrances, the US and Mexico always seem to have an unbreakable bond that still survives. The US has somewhere around 11 million Mexicans living in it today, which makes up the largest migrant group out of all immigrants. About 80% of Mexico's exports go to the US, and the US makes up about half of Mexico's imports. They cooperate very closely Mostly in international affairs, usually backing up similar Western values that the U.S. stands by. And overall, no matter how crazy things get, they can't help but be there for each other in the end. In conclusion, Caesar, what do you think? Well, imagine, I, I call it, uh, I don't know if this is conspiracy bullshit, but imagine Mexico would have like a, like a, they would elect a fascist or a communist, man. The CIA, will, wouldn't the CIA go in there like... Nope, you're not, you man. Say about America well, probably. It's almost uh, as if the people of Mexico has kind of been laugh very at the that face of destruction. Is, is we have volcanoes, earthquakes, stuff, drama, you know? but we colorfully play and dance they with did death. That, uh, it doesn't bother happened. us. If anything, ironically, it fuels us with even, even more. Even before light. the election. Very well said. Stay Operation tuned. Tumble. Micronesia, the Federated States of Micronesia, is coming up next. Viva Mexico! Viva Mexico! That was Mexico, boy.